Okay, so let's look at the fourth unit, which is enumeration and system hacking. Okay, so we'll have a quick look at the Windows architecture, uh, then go on to Windows enumeration, uh, look at the IPC dollar exploits, or the no sessions, uh, have a look at some of the countermeasures, Windows compromise, keyloggers, and covering tracks. Okay, so what does Windows architecture actually look like? Well, the Intel processor, which was the basis of the first PC, based around the 8086 processor, uh, had three, four rings uh, from ring 0 to ring 3. Most of the time we only use two rings, which is ring 3 and ring 0. In Ring 3, most of the applications actually run, the, the DLLs associated with applications also run within Ring 3. Uh, basic system support, service processes, user applications and environmental subsystems. The core of Windows is really in Ring 0 and this is the, the main kernel uh, to, to, the, to the system. Within that, there is a hardware abstraction layer, which provides an abstract way to be able to interface from the high level, from the operating system, into the actual detail of the hardware. Then we have the kernel, the core device drivers, and they run within inside an executive. Within inside Windows, uh, there are unique identities for the domains and for objects. This is described as a security identifier or an SID. So this gives an example of an SID. We have a revision number. We have an identifier authority, normally 48 bits. In this case, five corresponds to a login ID. And then we have a sub-authority, which is, and an SA name, which is really identifier uh, for the unique object with inside the domain. So in this case, there's a domain ID and then a sub-authority. In this case, it's non-unique and an SA. And at the end, we have an RID, which is a relative user ID. The administrator is 500, guest is 501, Kerberos is 502, and the first user starts at 1000 and 1001 and so on. So we can see an example of the user 2 SID, where we've asked uh, the machine Pluto for the guest account and it returns back and SID. We can then use this to be able to resolve the administrator account in this case. And in this case the name of the administrator account is Fred. Okay, so let's give that an example. Let's take an example of that. Okay, so let's find out what the name of the local machine is. And it's called Bill PC. can see here it's written back uh, the SID with the guest account which is 501 and so on. With inside Windows the passwords are stored in the SAM database which is, is mounted uh, with inside one of the registry keys. Okay, so let's have a look inside the registry. Okay, so it's the HK local machine and what we're looking for is Sam. 
and there we are. Okay, so it's this part of the registry which stores the usernames and passwords. There is a very important service which is run on the machine called the Local Authority Subsystem or LSASS and that provides the basic security for the whole system. It's responsible for access control, managing password policies, user authentication and for logging to the uh, to the uh, to auditing. Unfortunately the Sasar worm took advantage of this and was able to compromise the, the machine. So let's see if we can have a look at the let's see if we can find that process. And there we go, there's the local security authority process actually running on the machine. Normally these days within businesses, it is a domain controller which controls the main, the, the main passwords and user IDs for a whole host of uh, computers. So these mount into a domain uh, which has a domain controller. Then we run Active Directory to be able to uh, create a common security policy and also an infrastructure of domain objects. So the original protocol that Windows used to, to allow hosts to communicate over, over the network was called the NetBIOS. And NetBIOS itself is non-routable, so it is not possible to directly route NetBIOS over a, a router and it's not possible to route into an IP infrastructure. So to make it routable the server message blocks protocol was actually created and this allows for the remote sharing of files. The We have NetBIOS over uh, IP is the basic protocol and SMB is the is the protocol that's used to share the files. So if we want to block access to remote shares we must make sure that these ports are blocked. So we have the MSR RPC end mapper, NetBIOS name server, the datagram service, the session service and SMB over TCP. So these are the key ports that are either allowed or blocked. Okay, so let's have a look at enumeration with inside Windows. So with this we have a number of shares uh, with inside our Windows system and we can use the net share command to do this so let's have a look we can see here there's a number of shares on the system cfg uh, print that's the print share an important one is the remote ipc which allows for uh, remote systems to be able to administer the computer and the key commands that we have to be able to uh, enumerate is net view we can look at the domains in the system we can then look with inside a certain domain and see the computers with inside that and then we can go to a certain computer and look at the shares on that so in this case we're just running a uh, a work group so we only see a work group here but many computers now connect to a domain so let's have a look at an example of a domain
Okay, so this is a, a domain server that's running here. And we'll just have a look at the main domain. The main domains that uh, can be seen from here. So we can see that there's an apples for you domain and also a work group domain. So we can look inside apples for you and see the computers which are connecting to it. And we can see there there is one computer called the MSC coursework. Okay, so we can give it its NetBIOS name and be able to look at the shares on that computer and we can see FTP root, NetLogin and Sysfall are the three shares that, that we actually have on the machine. Okay, so that's the NetView slash domain, NetView slash domain with the the name of the domain that we want to look at and then net view and then slash and the net bias name. So the uh, the command that we can use to be able to uh, uh, create an, a null session share which we can then enumerate from is net use slash the name of the computer and IPC dollar. Then we can give the username, in this case the username is a is given as a, an empty string and that then allows us to enumerate. Okay, so so from this we can enumerate shares, usernames, SIDs and the running services. So let's take an example of this. So we'll do um, ipconfig to find out the name of the machine, and in this case it's Bill PC. So then the first thing that we can do is to then enumerate the guest account. So we can see here it's, it's returned back the SID with 501 at the end, as we would expect for the guest account. And now we'll run SID to user to find out what the name of the administrator account is. So we'll just copy all of this, paste it into here. And now we'll pass the identification of the domain, but this time we'll actually ask for the administrator account. And we can see here that the name of the administrator is called the administrator with inside the domain bill PC. Uh, there are other tools that we can use, uh, such as dumpsec, which will show us the shares, uh, and enum minus PC uh, actually shows us some of the details about the password accounts. mbstat shows us what the net BIOS name table looks like. So we'll have a look at what that looks like with inside a work group. Okay, so the actual uh, the value here defines what the type is. So a 1B is a domain controller, 1C a uh, 1B is a domain master, 1C is a domain controller. And what we'll do is we'll go to our domain server again. And we'll just enumerate from here. So we can see in this case there is our 1B and our 1C. Okay, so those are our domain controllers, and then there is a workstation within inside that domain controller called the MSC coursework. Okay, so the values that that we see. Uh, are significant for the status 
with inside the domain. So for null sessions, uh, if we want outside intruders to not get access to these, then we can block ports 135, 137, 139, 389 and 445. We can disable all our unnecessary services, such as disabling file and print sharing, and especially to disable net BIOS over TCP. And we can go into the registry and disable the uh, we can set the restrict anonymous setting. So let's see if we can find that in the registry. And it's under 8, eight key local machine. System. Can it control set? Controls. LIC and what we're looking for is the restrict anonymous setting and here we are okay so we can see the value just now is set to zero but we can actually edit that value if we want so a value of zero is there is no restrictions one means that we do not allow enumeration of security accounts manager accounts and names and two is no access without explicit anonymous permissions another way that that information can be gained is from SNMP and SNMP provides uh, a rich seam of data that can be used to enumerate the infrastructure. Uh, so unfortunately SMP version 1 is a clear text protocol uh, with a default strings of public and, and private. So anyone sniffing the network can actually find out what the community strings are and any of the information. Version 3 does use encryption and authentication. The basic ports used are 161 and 162 and we see here some examples of the tools. Uh, so this is from a Windows machine and this is from a, a wireless access point. Okay, so let's see a basic example of this. Okay, so what we have in SNMP is an OID, which is the object identifier with inside the MIB of the SNMP database. So we typically point to a certain address and we can then uh, view the details. So this is an example of configuring a wireless access point, a Cisco wireless access point for SNMP. So in this case, we're just logging in to it, give it the username and password and then what we're going to do is we're going to enable the community string which is the basic password that's used to access it so in this case we define it as public give it some basic details such as the contact point define some information such as the location of it it's just really a, dis a descriptor that we can use. And we can enable traps on the data. Okay, so that's our access point configured. Have a look at the SMP settings, and that's fine. So then what we can do is remotely we can walk through the database. So you can see the, in this, this case it shows us the location uh, the contact was that we just set. There are a number of tables with inside it, and we can walk through the interfaces. So it tells us we have a, a radio interface, Ethernet, and so on. And so each of the interfaces has got data associated with it, such as the amount of data packets in and out, and so on, and the basic type of the interface, such as radio or Ethernet. Okay, so we can see that we can look at the routing table. 
the IP address table, services, and so on. Okay, so SNMP uh, is a very powerful protocol, but it could be used by intruders to get extra information from our system. So the knock session can also be used uh, in terms of password guessing. So in this case, we have a, a PowerShell, Windows PowerShell script, which will investigate a password.txt file for certain usernames and passwords and then we'll iterate around them until it can find a match uh, to be able to get into the system. We can also use the NAT program and again it uses a file of usernames and passwords onto a certain address. Okay, so you should have a look at the textbook and also in the network sims tests to have a look at the rest of the material from this unit. So we had a look at the Windows architecture, I looked at uh, Windows enumeration, the shear exploits and, and some of the countermeasures for enumeration.